Hi there, and welcome to Carrie and Comfort Studios. It is I, Brother Wesley. Happy to be here once again. I hope I don't look super washed out, and I hope that the audio and video are linked up. Are they? Yes, they are. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's been an issue here for a little bit, but how's everyone doing? Let me go ahead and turn that down a little bit. Ooh. There we go. That's much better. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. I am so happy to be here. I am so happy to be having another Dark Depths episode for you guys. And this one is a favorite of mine. I'm so excited to get into it. Before we get into that nitty gritty, I just want to remind you, um, let's go over some, uh, some just announcements. After this episode, I'm going to be putting a poll on Twitter for everybody to decide which episode or which topic I'm going to cover next on Dark Depths. I can go ahead and say the decisions right now because I've had some leftovers that are like runoff from um, previous polls. But the uh, first two choices are originals that are going to be from from previous polls, which is Silent Hill and John Carpenter. I know that's one that people have been asking for uh, for a little bit. And then also a uh, third will be Stephen King. Um, and uh, if that is something... Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited for you to be here, Marchosius. I'm excited for this one, too. Um, so that will be available right after the uh, stream. I'll drop that as well. Uh, this Saturday, I uh, don't have anything big planned. I don't have, like, a Caring Comfort Cinema thing or anything. Those watch parties have been pretty fun. I like them, but I want to get back to trying out some other new content so i am going to try and i'm still looking a little bit washed out oh my god it's so hard on a mac so hard on a mac um but uh i am uh gonna be trying to find some games that are available to play on the mac because i don't have a pc built yet i've got parts I've got, i got i got a handful of parts uh, i still gotta get some more um but i would love to play any indie horror games or anything like that that this bad boy is capable of running. Um, so if you have any suggestions, please send them my way. I would love for like indie horror games or something. I've got World of Horror, but that one can get pretty crunchy because um, it is an RPG of sorts. But if you have any suggestions that are really like fun, uh, then send them my way. Or uh, I can do a little bit of a reading or something. Saturday nights are for us just to like hang out, spend some time together. Um, Going into the PC building thing, I've got a little donation. It's right here on this side. A little uh, donation bar that's tracking every uh, donation that we receive and all the bits and sub money and stuff like that is currently going towards a new vessel of productivity, which is a PC. I've got a couple fans, and I've got a SSD, but I do not have a... Video card, RAM, processor, all that stuff. That's stuff that I need. That stuff is expensive. So if you feel any inch of uh, charity or warm givings, I know times are tough right now, so I'm not not like like gonna plead too hard. But I'm just letting you know that if anything that goes to the stream goes directly to that currently. Um, also, uh, we do have merch available. Uh, so, oh, what? Oh, it could have been, if you used a Twitch Prime sub, then it could have been a uh, uh, unsubscribe, but uh, but you did just recently subscribe, so that, yeah, that was like, that was seven days ago. That's weird. That's very weird. That's kind of booty, actually. Very much so. Oh, well, thank you for subscribing again, Turtle. I appreciate that. I'll definitely uh, go ahead and take a look at that and see what's going on with that, though, and see if if anything weird happened. But thank you for your resub, Turtle. Um, uh, on the topic of sub... Oh, merch. Yes, we have merch available. Uh, if you go ahead and at any point you want to check it out, just go ahead and hit that right there, that command, and it brings up the link towards the merch store and you can check that out we have a uh a variety of items available that has the uh the logo a couple of other fun things i'm trying to see if i can get like an apron made available because i've been talking about doing a cooking stream for a little bit i've been kind of messing around with that and so i've been working with different things towards uh working with different uh, like technology and stands and everything like that to see if I could efficiently get a, a cooking stream. Um, but we will see how that goes, but I want to kind of get an apron, um, instead of saying kiss the cook, something like comfort the cook or something like that. Let me know how you think about that. 
Uh, also, letting you know, we are affiliate. As you can see, turtle subbed here. Always welcome subs. And do not forget that you can use your Twitch Prime. If you are an Amazon Prime member and you have Twitch Prime, um, you can use your free sub uh, to help support this stream. Uh, if you don't support this stream, go support another stream. Use that thing. It's just sitting there. It's a free sub for you, and it helps uh, provide a little extra backing towards any of your, uh, your favorite content creators. I use it on such content creators as Gehenna Gaming or the World of Darkness stream or uh, 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 throw out some other ones. Turtleman357, he streams too. So go ahead and give them some love. Give me some love. Give somebody some love. It's not doing any good just sitting there in that wheelhouse not being used. Um, I think that is it. Um, and I think we can dive into the nitty gritty that is the life and the works and the legend of literary great Shirley Jackson. So... A little breakdown for those who do not know who Shirley Jackson is. Shirley Jackson was an American writer who was known primarily for horror and mystery novels. Over the duration of her writing career, which spanned over two decades, she composed six different novels, two memoirs, and over 200 short stories. Over 200 short stories. That's the, uh, the uh, <laughs> some of the best t-shirts I own, not an ad. Well, thank you, thank you. They are pretty fucking comfy. I've got a hat that's over here. Thank you for the host as well, Turtle Man 357. But um, over 200 short stories. That's how I'm trying to be. I want to write over 200 short stories. Uh, that, that's, that's an amazing depth of work. Um, she was born in San Francisco, California. Uh, she, led, she is an uh, alumni of Syracuse University in New York. And that's where she met her husband, who was the, uh, the uh, university literary magazine's uh, part of the m magazine. She, was all, she met him through that. But she met her future husband, Stanley Edgar Hyman. We'll get more into him uh, later. They settled in North Bennington, Vermont in 1940 after uh, Hyman had established a career as a literary critic, and Jackson had started writing. After publishing her debut novel, The Road Through the Wall, which is pretty damn good, a semi-autobiographical account of her childhood in California, Jackson gained significant public attention for her short story, and probably her most famous work. It's been, it's been featured in multiple articles. It's read in schools across the country and even across the pond. Uh, the Lottery. And the lottery details a sinister underside of an idyllic American village, which she did base it on North Bennington. We'll get into that later as well. After the lottery was published, she continued to publish numerous short stories in journals and magazines throughout the 1950s, uh, some of which were, uh, were uh, found and uh, reassembled and reissued in her 1953 memoir, Life Among the Savages. In 1959, she published probably her most famous work other than The Lottery, her most famous novel, The Haunting of Hill House, uh, which has multiple adaptations. There's a movie called The Haunting that's based on it. There is a there's a uh, Netflix TV series, The Haunting of Hill House, which is great. It does a, It's a great adaptation of that. But uh, The Haunting of Hill House is a supernatural horror novel that has been lauded and considered, and what I consider... Uh, one of the best goddamn ghost stories ever written. Uh, it's phenomenal. You should read it. Uh, uh, everybody should read it. Um, she's known for being a reclusive woman, and she remained in North Bennington for the last years of her life, and she was reluctant to discuss her work with the public. By the 1960s, her health began to deteriorate significantly as a result of her increasing weight and cigarette smoking, ultimately leading to her death due to a heart condition in 1965 at the age of 48. Much too young. Much too young. She's been cited as an influence on so many different authors, including Neil Gaiman, Stephen King, Sarah Waters, Nigel Neal, Claire Fuller, Joanne Harris, and even Richard Matheson, another great horror literature, like, like, legend. So, that being the breakdown about Shirley Jackson, just a quick little overview. Uh, let's get into her early life here. She was raised in Burlingham, California, which is a very rich and wealthy suburb of San Francisco. Her family resided in a two-story brick home. That was on Forest View Road, and she had a very strained relationship with her mother. Uh, 
her parents had married young, and Geraldine, her mother, had been disappointed when she immediately became pregnant with Shirley. She had been looking sp forward to spending time with her dashing young husband. Jackson, growing up, was un often unable to fit in with other children and spent much of her time writing, which was very, very distressing to her mother. Geraldine made no attempt to hide her favoritism toward her son, Barry, who, in a, uh, auto a, a biography that was written about Shirley Jackson, stated that um, his, mother's antagonism, or his mother's antagonism towards Shirley uh, came from the fact that she was a deeply conventional woman who was horrified by the idea that her daughter was not going to be deeply conventional. Um, she came from a rich, affluent, white California family, and to be an introvert to be to want to be a writer to to not want to do things like play cricket in the backyard or go sunbathing was 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 it just horrified her mother uh i know a few people's families that are like that um so due to that shirley uh was a teen uh, uh due to the treatment of her mother and also just genetics shirley was uh had a weight fluctuation which resulted in a lack of confidence that is prevalent throughout the rest of her life um it's 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 one of those things that deeply affected her and you can see it in her work and and also and and how and how it affected her speaking about her own work and dealing with interviews and with the public jackson's maternal grandmother who was nicknamed mimi uh, mine was nicknamed Ma Mima. Uh, she was a Christian science practitioner who continued to practice spiritual healing on members of the family further on after her retirement. Uh, Shirley was known to critically access all these attempts, and she recounted a time when her Mimi claimed to have broken her leg and healed it through prayer overnight, though she had only really just lightly sprained her ankle. When her Mimi died, Jackson told her daughter that she died of Christian science. While she believed that religion could easily become a vehicle for harm, the religious influences from her childhood are clear in Jackson's writing, including the themes of mysticism, mental power, and witchcraft. Shirley attended Burlingham High School, where she played violin in the school orchestra. Uh, she, during her senior year of high school, the Jackson family relocated to Rochester, New York from Burlingham, and there she finished out the rest of her uh, school year at Brighton High School. Uh, and she graduated in 1934. She then at attended the University of Rochester, where her families felt that they could maintain supervision over her studies. But she was very, very unhappy with her classes there, and she took a year-long hiatus, uh, a, 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 a gap year, which I highly recommend if you're going to college and you're having a tough time. Take a gap year. It's fine. It happens. Um, so she took a gap year, and then she transferred her studies to Syracuse University, where she flourished both creatively and socially. Uh, there, out of the eye and the magnifying glass of her overbearing mother and her seemingly non-existent relationship with her father, she was able to. She was able to focus on her writing and focus on becoming a better version of herself. Um, it's, it's, it's a clear sign. I, I'm definitely not an expert in abuse or, or mental health or anything. I just know that my own experiences, but I do know that, that there, a lot of those times when, when, when you live in a relationship with an abusive, uh, like parental unit, the best thing for you to do is often get away from them for your own mental health and for your own like social health to grow and, 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 and thrive. Um, there she received her bachelor's degree in journalism. And while she was a student at Syracuse, she became involved with the campus literary magazine where she met her future husband, Stanley Edgar Hyman, who was to become a very notable literary critic. While attending Syracuse, the university's literary magazine published Jackson's first story, Janice, which was about a teenager's suicide attempt. And she got that story, uh, that story, um, inspiration from a fellow teenager that she knew. And, and, and she got wide acclaim across the campus and from the, from the magazine about her writing style and her, her, and her framework and her pacing of her stories specifically. After graduating, Jackson and Hyman married in 1944 and had brief sojourns to New York City and Westport, Connecticut. They ultimately settled in the town of North Bennington, Vermont, where Hyman had been hired as an instructor at Bennington College. Jackson began writing material as Hyman established himself as a critic. They were both known for being colorful, general hosts who surrounded themselves with literary talents, including Ralph Ellison. They were both enthusiastic readers whose personal library estimated at over 25,000 books. It's a massive library. 
I feel like I have a ton of books, and I'm not even close to having 25,000. They had four children together, Lawrence, also known as Lori, Joan, Janny, Sarah, also known as Sally, and Barry, named after her brother, who later retrieved their own literary fame as fictionalized versions of themselves and her mother's short stories. According to a lot of biographers, her marriage and what we know now is actual truth. Her marriage was plagued by Hyman's infidelities, notably having sex with his students. And she, after his pestering and prodding, reluctantly agreed to maintaining an open relationship with him. Though, as you'll see in a lot of research on her life, and his life especially, uh, that was not an open road. It was it was it didn't go both ways. It was it was it was merely a way for him to be able to continue uh sleeping around on her without him having any sort of guilt. Um it's at this point where it goes to show that that Hyman took up the mantle of an abuser from her mother. Um he he would and it's kind of hard for me to talk about, but but he would he would he would insult her. He would insult her writing. He would he would push her to write more. He would tell her that she would write less. Uh, he, he would he would get on to her for for spending time with with male uh, friends and peers, um, unless he was around. Uh, he's he he is I can say without any doubt in my mind a true blue piece of shit. Um, yeah, and. We'll touch on that more. The books, not the four kids. Yes, no, no, def definitely, definitely. Four kids, that would make me break out in hives. Uh, the books, definitely a dream for me. Um, on top of all of this, Hyman also controlled her finances. Uh, he would uh, give her an allowance of her or earnings when he saw fit, when he saw that it was responsible. Uh, despite the fact that after the, sex of the success of the lottery, she was making far much more money than he was. Uh, he was just a literary crit critic while she was churning out short stories and novels and, and, and finding success in them being published and republished multiple editions of all of these stories. She was making a ton of money, but he had such a tight grip on their household and especially their marriage and her finances that she couldn't do much of anything without it. He would probably use it more than she did. So, in 1954, Jackson published The Bird's Nest, which detailed a woman with multiple personalities and her relationship with her psychiatrist. That is a very excellent novel. I recommend everybody read it, especially if if you have an interest in, in therapy and mental health and different uh, different psychological disorders that, that, that interest you and you want to study more. The Bird's Nest is a great book to really dive into. Um, I read it in college and not really knowing that she t touched on more topics other than than ghost stories and 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 other forms of horror it it really affected me and it really had a positive um influence on my work and also my reading um one of Jackson's pu uh publishers after that Roger Strauss deemed that the bird's nest was a perfect novel but the publishing house marketed it as a psychological horror story which deeply deeply displeased her because it's not it's 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 more so a, an an earnest open look at someone dealing with mental health issues and 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 it was very therapeutic for her um her following novel the sundial which i have not read was published four years later and it concerned a family family of wealthy eccentrics who believe they have been chosen to survive the end of the world i definitely need to find a copy of that because that don't, does sound inter interesting she later published two memoirs life among the savages and raising demons um life among the savages is a um great title for describing her life living with her family and also living in North Bennington, uh, which she has uh, parodied North Bennington in a multiple a multitude of her stories, uh, including uh, uh, including the lottery. Uh, but you will also see it in one of her what I consider her best novel and one of my favorite novels. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, and also raising demons where she talked about raising four children. Uh, Jackson's fifth novel, and probably her most successful, is The Haunting of Hill House, which was published in 1959. And that follows a group of individuals participating in a normal paranormal study, uh, or participating in a paranormal study at a reportedly haunted mansion. Uh, this has seen 
multiple awards. Uh, she made a ton of money off of it that she didn't get to use. Uh, adaptations, uh, movie adaptations beforehand, uh, as well as television adaptations. Um, it is it is probably the per the most perfect ghost story. If it, it, it the woman in black and also it, is a really good one, but it pales in comparison to this one. Um, the novel, which has interpolated supernatural phenomena with psychology, went on to become a critically esteemed example of the haunted house story, and was described by Stephen King as one of the most important horror novels of the 20th century. Also in 1959, Jackson published a one-act children's musical, The Bad Children, which was based on Hansel and Gretel. Um, so at this point in her career, she is seeing success after success, everything that she's publishing or having put into magazines or or any form of, of newsletters is being met with, with great, great reception. Um, and she's it, it, just to show her, her, her variety and her talent, she's able to not only publish horror stories, but also memoirs, children's short stories at this time. Because because I'm, I'm covering on a few important ones, but she has over 200 short stories published, and a lot of those were, were for children. And she has children's books that she wrote as well. Um, and she is even able to publish a one-act children's musical based on Hansel and Gretel. That's, 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 that's showing your talent. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's flexing your depth. That's flexing there. Um, it's, it's easy to see how she is, uh, such a, a, a well-regarded, uh, a literacist. Um, so by the time that Haunting of Hill House had been published, and was going through a second, uh, a second edition, Jackson suffered numerous health problems. She was overweight, as well as a heavy smoker, which resulted in chronic asthma, joint pain, exhaustion, and dizziness, leading to fainting spells, which attributed to a heart problem. Near the end of her life, Jackson also saw a psychiatrist for severe anxiety, which had kept her housebound for extended periods of time, a problem worsened by a diagnosis of colitis, which made it physically difficult to travel even short distances from her own home. To ease her anxiety and agoraphobia, the doctor prescribed barbiturates to her, which at that time was considered harmless and a safe drug to use for all these problems. For many years, she also had periodic prescriptions for amphetamines for weight loss, which may have inadvertently aggravated her anxiety, leading to a cycle of prescription drug abuse using the two medications to counteract each other's effects. Any of these factors, or a combination of all of them, probably contributed to her declining health. Jackson confided in friends that she'd felt patronized in her role as a faculty wife and ostracized by the townspeople of North Bennington. Her dislike of the situation led to her increasing abuse of alcohol in addition to tranquilizers and amphetamines. So what we're seeing here is a perfect storm. And it's not perfect, but it's a perfect storm of a woman who has spent years of her life being abused by not only her mother, but her husband. That, that has led to her having fluctuating health problems and weight problems, losing and gaining weight. Uh, there, there's, there's, she wrote and she said herself that she had gained weight from her, just to piss off her mother, just to, just to, just to, just to piss her off that she wasn't the perfect little person. Um, that led over into how she treated her health and her weight with her husband, doing things to, to, to stick barbs into him, to getting a little bit of, um, of, of, of a, an edge up on him, to, 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 to push forth things and, and to, 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 to piss him off, understandably so, seeing how much of a terrible person he was. There is a... story that I'm going to talk about and it's a quote that she wrote in her journal that uh that really hit home for me when I was doing research for this and I, and I can't wait to share it with you guys but we'll talk on that more after we talk about the rest of her life despite her ailing health health Jackson continued to write and publish several works in the 1960s including her final novel we have always lived in the castle which was published in 1962 this is one of my favorite books by her, probably my all-time favorite. I consider it a masterpiece. It is a perfect piece of literature, and it really dives into the mind of a woman that is being held captive, that's, that, that, that can't go outside for, for her own mental reasons, but also to, stay, to, to keep away from the people that, that, that 
harass her and make fun of her and, and feeling trapped with her family members and being trapped in this housewife role. Um, the two main characters are what she called two sides of the same coin, uh, two parts of the same woman. Um, you have Mary Cat, who is the, the main character, uh, who is adventurous and confident and, and, and sticks up for her sister. Uh, and her sister, her sister's name escapes me currently. Let me see here. I've got it right here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I think I have it here. Uh, uh, Constance, uh, who Constance is is viewed as the doting housewife who doesn't want to shake things up too much. Um, there's a lot of stories. Uh, uh, there's a lot of stories going around within that story about how Constance may have killed her own family members, um, and all that leads into her eventual, well, the climax of the story, which is wonderfully, wonderfully written, uh, and it and it's and it's deeply, deeply disturbing and sad. Um, and that's, that's another great thing about her works is that it wasn't just horror for the sake of horror. It was horror with a purpose. It was horror that, that lended to a greater discussion, um, whether that be about society and societal collapse or, or about being mistreated or being abused or, or being harassed by the town that you live in and feeling like you can't escape, um, that's why she's always been a favorite of mine, and I'll go into that more uh, when I gush about her a little bit more. Um, shortly after the publication of that uh, of, of that story, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, she suffered a, a nervous breakdown and a prolonged bout of acute agoraphobia that prevented her from going outside for a, a half of a year. She's quoted to, to writing, I've written myself into the house. It took her two years to recover from this, and during which that time she was able to write endlessly. She was writing from a journal standpoint, though. After We Have Always Lived in the Castle, she didn't want to write fiction anymore. She was she felt like she was being pigeonholed, and she felt like it was it was it was pushing her to 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 be somebody that she wasn't. Uh, but she started a journal, and that and 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 she started slowly coaxing herself back into writing more fiction. In it, she looked forward to a future in which she would be free from fear and able to finally leave her husband. She writes that she wishes to be separate, to be alone, to stand and walk alone, not to be different and weak and helpless and degraded. This new liberated person, she speculated, would have to find a new subject, a new style for her writing. This is one of the quotes that she wrote in her journal. One second. Let's see if this can get caught up a little bit. Because everything is... I'm having some some latency issues here. Sorry about that, guys. I'm getting clear across the board. Bit rate, everything's looking good. Weird. Okay. I'm getting some drop frames and stuff too. Anyways, uh, we'll just keep on trucking. But uh, she she she's quoted as writing in her journal. Uh, if I am cured and well and oh glorious alive, then my books should be different. Who wants to write about anxiety from a place of safety? Although I suppose I would never be entirely safe since I cannot completely reconstruct my mind. But what conflict is there to write about then? I keep thinking vaguely about husbands and wives, perhaps in suburbia, but I do not really think this is my kind of thing. Perhaps a funny book, a happy book. Plots will come flooding when I get the rubbish cleared away from my mind. This is clearly a woman that that has gone to her wit's end. She's been pushed so far that she needs any possible way of getting out, of escaping from the hellish nightmare that she was living within her own mind and within her own household. Um, eventually, she would begin a new novel. It'd be a happy novel in which a recently widowed woman abandons her old name and she starts calling herself Angela Motorman, and she embarks on a new life in a boarding house unencumbered by pets and address books and souvenirs and friends. She is alone but confident that she can provide her own, as she's quoted to say to write, find high gleefulness. She was 75 pages into this novel when she died in her sleep of heart failure at age 48. Her 
her death was attributed to a coronary occlusion due to arterial arteriosclerosis or cardiac arrest. And after her death, she was cremated as per her will. In 1968, Jackson's husband released a posthumous volume of her work, Come Along With Me. And in it, it contained her unfinished last novel, as well as 14 unreleased and uncollected short stories. Among them was Louisa, Please Come Home, and three lectures that she gave at colleges or writers' conferences in her last years. In 1996, a crate of her unpublished stories were found in a barn behind Jackson's house. A selection of those stories, along with previously uncollected stories from various magazines, were published in 1996 called Just an Ordinary Day, uh, which I do have here somewhere. I'll have to find it. The title was taken from one of her stories for the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, One Ordinary Day with Peanuts. Her papers that she had wrote, her personal papers in her journal, are available in the Library of Congress. You can go see them now. They're displayed. And in the, uh, the August 5th, 2013 issue of The New Yorker, they published Paranoia, which the magazine said was discovered at the library. Let me tell you, a collection of stories and essays by Jackson, which were mostly unpublished, were also released recently in 2015. So, the life of a badass woman that was being pushed and prodded, and she couldn't find any respite. And out of that came an excellent body of work, but it had a very severe, severe cost. I'm going to take a quick break real quick. I'm going to rehydrate. I'm going to use the bathroom, and then we will get into her legacy, what she left us, and what she means to me. Be right back, guys.
All right, we are back. I hope the latency issues worked out. Uh, my internet has not tanked or anything like that that I know of. I, I got rid of any excess programs right in the background, so hopefully we'll get that taken care of. But, so, where we left off, we were going to be talking about her legacy, what she left us, and what she means to me. And how I'm going to be kind of dividing these episodes, just as a quick aside before we continue, um, I'm going to be dividing them into three parts which is their career uh it's it's, it's going to have the overview but it's going to have their their life and their career what they their legacy what they left behind for us if they're passed on or if, even if they're still living what they left us and then a uh what what they mean to me and uh what what specifically her what shirley jackson means to me so let's get into it with what she left us uh, what the legacy that she left behind one of the most well-known things that uh came out of uh shirley jackson's writing and her life is uh the in 2007 the shirley jackson awards were established with permission of her estate of course uh the works, which include novellas, novels, novelettes, short stories, short story collections, and single author collections now, I believe as well, are um, they are awarded in recognition of her legacy in writing, and they are given to writers for outstanding achievement in the literature of psychological suspense, horror, and the dark fantastic. The awards are presented at ReaderCon every year. Um, unfortunately, we won't be having one this year. Uh, some of the notable award winners are... Jeff Vandermeer in 2014 for his novel Annihilation, um, Bizarre of Bad uh, Bizarre of Bad Dreams I'm pretty sure by Stephen King, which was a uh, a uh, yeah the Bizarre of Bad Dreams which was his single author collection of short stories, um, as well as uh, Greer Gilman for Cry Murder in a Small Voice, uh, Karen Warren for her novella Sky which is pretty damn good, um, Witches on the Road Tonight by Sherry Holman. And another one, uh, an anthology series called Stories, All New Tales, which were edited by Neil Gaiman and Al Sorantonio. Um, multiple, multitude of other great, great works in psychological and horror fiction, um, particularly Annihilation. That's uh, That whole series is a favorite of mine. That movie is a favorite of mine. Um, but it, it's, it's wonderful that, that there's this award that's given out to literature that's in her name. Um, that is that is well regarded up there with the Hugo Awards or the Saturn Awards. Um, it's it's something that I look forward to every year um, to t to check out and to uh, to see if there's anything that I've missed in the years of books that have been published. Um, and uh, I can't wait to see what comes out this year, uh, especially in these times that we're living in right now. Um, some more things. Uh, in 2014, Susan Scarf Merrill published a well-received thriller called Shirley, a novel, which is about Shirley Jackson, her husband, and a fictional co uh, a couple that moves in with them, and a missing girl in North Bennington. In, two in 2020, this year, the novel was adapted into a feature film called Shirley, which was directed by Josephine Decker, and it stars Elizabeth Moss, who portrays Shirley Jackson, and Michael Stuhlbarg, who co-stars the Stanley Edgar Hyman. It has not been released yet. I'm sh I think it's coming out later in the summer or closer around October, maybe? I'll have to double-check on that. Um, but I'm very, very, very excited to check that out. That movie looks excellent. Looks excellent. The the trailer is online. I'll, I'll post it on Twitter afterwards. Um... Since at least 2015, Jackson's adopted home of North Bennington has honored her legacy by celebrating Shirley Jackson Day on June 27th, the day the fictional story The Lottery took place, which is pretty funny if you think about it because she wrote about North Bennington in The Lottery, um, and it, uh, it doesn't, doesn't look too well on North Bennington, but it's very cool that the city now uh, holds Shirley Jackson Day in her honor. Um, I'm, I'm glad that they were able to... Uh, to uh, have that put aside, uh, put in place for her. All right. So there's multiple different surveys of Shirley Jackson's work. Uh, Judy Oppenheimer covers Shirley Jackson's life and career in Private Demons, The Life of Shirley Jackson, where I got some of my quotes from and everything. S.T. Joshi's The Modern Weird Tale, uh, which offers a critical essay on Jackson's work as well. Both of those are must reads if you want to look more into her life and more in depth more than i could probably go into um 
one of the most famous uh, overviews of Jackson's short fiction is Joan Wiley Hall's Shirley Jackson, A Study of the Short Fiction. And the only critical bibliography of Jackson's work is Paul N. Reinsch's A Critical Bi- Bibliography of Shirley Jackson, the American Writer. Um, reviews, criticisms, and adaptations. Uh, all those are definitely, definitely something that you need to check into. Uh, Colin Haynes also has Frightened by a Word, Shirley Jackson, and Lesbian Gothic, which explores the lesbian themes in Jackson's major novels. According to the post-feminist critic Elaine Showalter, Jackson's work is the single most important mid-20th century body of literary output yet to have its value reevaluated by critics, and I agree with that. In a March 4, 2009 podcast, which was distributed by The Economist, Showalter also noted that Joyce Carol Oates had edited a collection of Jackson's work called Shirley Jackson Novels and Stories that was published in the Library of America series. Oates writes of Jackson's fiction, saying that it is characterized by the caprice and fatalism of fairy tales. The fiction of Shirley Jackson exerts a mordant, hypnotic spell. Jackson's husband that piece of shit, wrote in his preface to a posthumous anthology of her work that she consistently refused to be interviewed, to explain or promote her work in any fashion, or to take public stands and be the pundit of the Sunday supplements. She believed that her books would speak for her clearly enough over the years. Hyman insisted that the dark visions found in Jackson's work were not, as some critics claimed, the product of personal, even neurotic fantasies, but rather comprised a sensitive and faithful anatomy of the Cold War era in which she lived. They're fitting symbols for a distressing world of the concentration camp and of the bomb. Jackson also took pleasure in the subversive impact of her work, as indicated by Hyman's statement that she was always proud that the Union of South Africa banned the lottery, and she felt that they at least understood the story. Um, She was also known for what interviews that she did give and uh, times that she talked about her work that she would uh not essentially fake but she would she would hint that she performed witchcraft that she was not your everyday woman that she was that she was far beyond a housewife and that she would put spells on her critics uh to and hexes on her critics and uh publishers to make sure that they did her work justice and also that they critically reviewed them with a full and open mind instead of just briefly glancing over them and tossing them to the side like any other female author might uh might have been affected during that time in the 1980s we were witnessing we were able to witness a considerable scholarly interest in jackson's work peter Cinco, a marxist critic advanced an economic interpretation of the lottery that focused on the inequitable stratification of the social order Sue Vareg Lapp argued in her PhD thesis that feminist critics who do, who do not consider Jackson to be a feminist played a significant role in her lack of earlier critical attention. In contrast, Jacob Appel has written that Jackson was an anti-regionalist writer whose criticism of New England proved unpalatable to the American literary establishment. That's something that that might um, interest you, Catholic Eros, as somebody that lives in New England, um, is that uh, all of her works frame New England in the perfect light that uh, I know you and I have had discussions about. In 2009, critic Harold Bloom published an extensive study of her work that challenged the notion that it was worthy of inclusion in the Western canon. Bloom wrote of the lottery specifically, her art of narration stays on the surface and could not depict individual identities. Even the lottery wounds you once and and once only. And I put that there because it's, it's good to see what people had to speak out against her as well as lauding her to show that she was going up against anybody who's read the lottery. I've read it multiple times. People have read it in high schools, middle schools, all over the place. It's well regarded. And even you can tell that there's something that is beneath the surface. That It's not a shallow short story as some might think. Um, there's layers to her writing and, and there's, there's intricate, strings that she's pulling in her storytelling and it might seem vague and it might not take on an in-depth look on this town like say Stephen King might when he gets over bloated with his writing um but to say that it that it's shallow and it stays on the surface is not really understanding the work itself it and I'm not a critic I'm not, you know, I don't have any critiques to my name. I'm not published in any magazine or newspaper or have any articles. Um, but I'd have to say that Harold Bloom's probably full of shit. Um, and Harold Bloom can meet me in the parking lot if he has anything else to say about Shirley Jackson. So, that being said, let's talk about what Shirley Jackson means to me. 
Shirley Jackson came to me at a point in my life where I was getting heavily involved in horror fiction. I was reading much of Clive Barker, Richard Matheson, um, Ray Bradbury, especially Stephen King. Uh, I have tons of Stephen King books. I love Stephen King. Uh, schlock and all. Uh, I, I love his garbage with his greats. Um, and I kept seeing a through line, a theme, uh, a, 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 a correlation between all of their work. There's, there's something that, that really shone through, and that was their understanding and their ability to write characters, to, to, to write believable characters that felt living and breathing, and also to create settings that felt lived in, that, that had history behind them. Stephen King does a really good job of this, but sometimes he gets too much and he, he overstuffs his works but I started doing some research when I was in high school and it didn't take me too far to realize that all these authors that I was interested in all these things all these books I was reading had one singular influence on their work and that was Shirley Jackson Shirley Jackson and that's when I started like diving into the house on Haunted Hill or the Haunting of Hill House not the house on Haunted Hill that's a completely different thing um and the bird's nest um and uh, some of her short stories, uh, even some of her, um, even some of her uh, uh, children's books, which she writes a history of the Salem, uh, the, the the witchcraft trials of Salem and Salem, Massachusetts, which is actually very interesting and pretty dark for a children's book. But there's a lot of dark children's books, but it's definitely worth if you can find it a good one to give your kids if you got any. Um, but I, I started diving in, and and what I saw was somebody that was deeply haunted, but also very open and earnest and honest with her writing, who was able to, to in a few short lines, completely get me on board with a character and believing that there is an actual living, breathing person with the name Mary Cat. Or, or, or that, that ghost stories were real because they were taking place in these settings that were very, very real. These towns that she wrote about, they, they, they had a general populace, they had buildings in them, they, they, they had a history to them that, that had not existed before she had put them the pen to paper or type, I, she could have used a typewriter for all I know, who knows. But it, it opened my eyes to start researching more and more writers. And, and I believe that she doesn't get enough credit especially as being a woman writer, but also as just being a writer in general for having such an influence on so many writers and creators today. We wouldn't... I, I think the, the landscape of horror literature would be completely different if not for her. I, I don't think that it would be looked at with such fondness, and we wouldn't have great works of literature that came out if it was not for her and the world is and i definitely believe this the world was a darker place when she passed um she died at 48 which is much too young to die at um also knowing her history and definitely doing the research for this episode has started to help me do a lot more looking into myself and looking into my habits and looking into the things that I do that compromise my mental health and also my physical health. Um, I, 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 it's, it's a shame that somebody so talented, not even somebody so talented, but a person had to go through what she went through. And, and that happens to people every day. And it's a shame that they have to deal with it, but it, it, it definitely, amongst other things, it, 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 it set a signal flare that I need to take a little bit more care of my mental health. And I need to, I need to really be able to talk with somebody earnestly about the things that are going on inside my mind. And I need to definitely like be able to, to look at the things that I'm eating and, 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 and luckily I don't smoke anymore, but but like the habits of my like my drinking and 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 my past drug use and everything and and realize that 
though I was looking for comfort in those things, and, and I too was looking for something to ease the storm that was going on in my life and in my head, they weren't helping. They were only hurting. Um, and she's done such like such wonders for me to inspire me to write more too. Uh, this is a woman, she only had six novels. Uh, and then you look at somebody like Stephen King who like writes a book a year or whatever. Um, but you compare the two and quality or quantity does not always overtake quant, uh, uh, quality. Sorry. Quantity does not always overtake quality. Those six novels that she wrote have done more for literature than I would say over half up to all of Stephen King's full library, his bibliography. I, I, Truly wish I could have se- I could read more novels that she wrote, but she has over two hundred short stories. And the best thing about a short story is that you can read it in an hour or two, or even less, and you can digest it, and you can take it in, and then you can move on to the next one. So I highly recommend definitely, definitely go out and grab Haunting of Hill House or 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 or, or the Bird's Nest, or definitely get We Have Always Lived in, in This Castle. Um, I definitely highly recommend those, but see if you can find a short story collection of hers, of hers, and just dive into it. Um, you'll see there is a breadth of variety in stories, uh, that goes from horror to just normal everyday fiction to children's fiction, um, and, and really tuck into it. Uh, let's see here. I have some recommendations. Let me go ahead and pull them up as well for her short stories. Um, I'm not going to cover all 200 of them, but I'll go over some of my favorites. Uh, Paranoia, like I uh, mentioned earlier, is excellent. Root of Evil is exquisite. Little Dog Lost is more of a, uh, uh, of a, uh, aimed at a younger audience. Uh, I Don't Kiss Strangers, which is in just an ordinary day. Um, check out that one. That one's very funny. Uh, the Gift is great. Uh, Daughter Come Home and Charles is also another good one. Um, and finally, uh, Y and I and Y and I and the Ouija board are all great. Uh, her children's books that he, she wrote were The Witchcraft of Salem Village that was published in 1956. The Bad Children, a play in one act for bad children, which was the Hansel and Gretel one act musical. Nine Magic Wishes and Famous Sally. Um, check out her memoirs as well. Life Among the Savages, An Uneasy Chronicle, and Raising Demons. Um, a lot of her stories are collected in uh, collections like The Lottery and Other Stories, which is one of her most constantly published and goes into different editions all the time as The Lottery and Other Stories, which was published in 1949. Come Along With Me, which is part of a novel, 16 stories and three lectures that was released in 1968 after her death and Just an Ordinary Day. Um, see if you can find them, grab them as much as you can. Her novels are The Road Through the Wall. Uh, I have not read that one, or her first one. Uh, Hangs a Man, which is great. Uh, the Bird's Nest, phenomenal. The Sundial, which I have not read. The Haunting of Hill House, which I love, and We Have Always Lived in the, in the Castle, uh, which is phenomenal. Hangs a Man is really great. It's a gothic novel, um, and it uh, it it is a uh, it is a uh, Bill Dung's Roman centering on lonely college freshman Natalie Waite who descends into madness after enrolling into a liberal arts college. A um, uh, a Bill Dung's Roman is a, a literary genre that focuses on psychological and moral growth of the protagonist from youth to adulthood, which I think I could classify a friend of mine that that has a excellent book that is, I would say more YA and such that I've read a couple times is great. And I can't wait for it to be published. Um, but I, I would say that it does fit within that category though. It's more horror and fantastical than that. Um, so be sure to check out her works. Be sure to check out the adaptations of her works, the different movies. Um, let me see. Uh, there's okay. So to go through adaptations, there's, uh, Lizzie, which was a, uh, a movie that was uh, by Hugo Haas that was based on the, board, uh, the Bird's Nest that stars Richard Boone, Joan Blondell, and Marion Ross. Um, you can uh, check out The Haunting, which was uh, released in 1963. Uh, we Have Always Lived in This Castle was adapted for the stage by Hugh Wheeler. 
Um, there's also a movie of that that is on Netflix currently, I believe. Um, and it is it doesn't have great reviews, but I truly, truly do like the adaptation of it. I think it's a great adaptation. Um, it stars Alexandra Daddario, Crispin Glover, Sebastian Stan, and uh, I'm going to butcher her name, but Taisha? Taisha, Taisha, Taisha for me, for me, I don't fucking know, uh, sorry, uh, she's in American Horror Story, uh, Michael Douglas produced it, um, but, uh, it is a great, 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 uh, adaptation, and it's actually Lawrence, or Lori Jackson Hyman, her son's favorite adaptation, because he helped produce it, because uh, he was disappointed in produ- uh, uh, productions of her works, uh, there was also a remake of The Haunting, um, by Jean de Bont that was released in 1999 that has Liam Neeson, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Owen Wilson in it. Uh, there is a um, there is the Netflix series The Haunting of Hill House, which is a 10-episode horror series, and they're having a sequel that is uh, going to be taking some liberties, but it's based on some more of her works as well. It's an anthology series. Um, and there is going to be a feature-length film that has been in development from 2018, and um, from Paramount that is uh, uh, that is based on the lottery, uh, as well as there's the movie Shirley that's coming out later this year. So check all of those out as well. Um, something I just wanted to close on is um, when she passed away and they had her journal and everything, it was very... St- sad that she was not able to find out if this new turn that she wanted to take in her life was going to work and whether she was able to be capable of living alone but the last words in her journal that she wrote um these are her very last words that she ever wrote in her journal are words that suggest someone that's looking towards a light at the end of a very dark and dank tunnel um the words of someone that wants nothing to but to 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 be in a better place to be in a better headspace to be in a better life that's her own um and the quote that she wrote as her last words and it's what i'm gonna leave you guys on is i am the captain of my fate laughter is possible laughter is possible laughter is possible and with that guys i'm going to go ahead and say good night Thank you all for joining. This is a little bit shorter than our Junji Ito episode, but I was able to get in a little bit more in depth. Um, if you'd like to talk more about Shirley Jackson or anything else, please do find me on Twitter. Find me wherever you can. I'm on Instagram. I would love to talk more about her works. Uh, I would love to go on a deep dive of some of your favorite works by her. Um... But that's all I'm going to have for tonight. Uh, Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for following and and participating in this. Um, Don't forget I'm going to post a poll at the end on Twitter about the next work. And I will see you guys later. And remember, comfort comes soon and laughter is possible. Thank you guys.